Hi, Jonas. It's Auntie Sarah. I'm so happy that you are enjoying this book, The Wizard of Oz. So today we are going to read chapters 15 and 16. Chapter 15, Oz Grants Three Wishes. And here is a picture of The Wizard of Oz by the window. We'll find out a little bit more about that. <clears throat> The next morning, the Scarecrow went to see Oz and get his brains. He went to the throne room and knocked at the door. Come in, said Oz. The Scarecrow went in and found the little man sitting by the window. I have come for my brains, said the Scarecrow. I have not forgotten, said Oz, but I must take your head off in order to put your brains in their proper place. That's all right, said the Scarecrow. Are you... You are quite welcome to take my head off as long as it will be a better one when you put it on again. So the wizard unfastened the scarecrow's head and emptied out the straw. And then he went back to the back room and mixed up a cup of cereal with many pins and needles and shook the mixture again and again. Then he filled the top of the scarecrow's head with the mixture and stuffed the rest, with the rest of the space with straw to hold it in place. When he fastened it on the scarecrow's head, back onto the body again, Oz said, From now on, you will be a great man, for you have brains. The scarecrow was pleased and proud, and he thanked the wizard again and again. When Dorothy saw the scarecrow with all the needles and pins sticking out of his head, she was very surprised. So here's the wizard filling the scarecrow's head with pins and needles. How do you feel? she asked. I feel very wise, answered the scarecrow. When I get used to my brains, I will know everything. Well, I must go to Oz and get my heart, said the tin man. So he walked to the throne room and knocked at the door. Oz welcomed the tin man and said he was ready to give him a wonderful heart. He cut a small hole in the left side of the tin man's chest. Then he went into the back room and brought out a pretty heart made entirely of silk, stuffed with sawdust. Isn't it a beauty? asked Oz. Yes, it is indeed, answered the tin man. But what, uh, but is it a kind heart? Oh, very kind, answered Oz. And he put the heart in the tin man's chest, and then he replaced the square of tin that he had removed. There, he said, now you have a heart that any man would be proud of. And there's the tin man heart, or the Oz putting a heart into the tin man. The tin man thanked Oz and went back to his friends. Everyone wished him joy and good luck with his new heart. Next, it was the lion's turn to get his courage. He walked to the throne room and knocked at the door. Come in, said Oz. I have come for my courage, announced the lion as he entered the room. Very well, said Oz. I will get it for you. And he went to the cupboard and took down a green, a square green bottle. He poured the contents into a green dish. And he placed this in front of the lion, who sniffed at it as if he didn't like it. Then the wizard said, drink. What is it? asked the lion. Well, answered Oz, if it were the inside of you, it would, if it were inside of you, it would be courage. You know that courage always lives inside. So this cannot really be called courage until you've swallowed it. I think you should drink it as soon as possible. Here's Oz getting the bottle. Knows what? The lion did not hesitate. He drank until the dish was empty. How do you feel? asked Oz. Full of courage, said the lion. Then he went back to tell his friends of his good fortune. Oz smiled to think of his success in giving the scarecrow and the tin man and the lion exactly what they thought they needed. It was as easy to it was easy to make them happy because they imagined that he could do anything. But Oz knew it would be much more difficult to take Dorothy back to Kansas. He was very worried. He was not at all sure that how it could be done. Here is the lion drinking his courage. So what was the Oz really saying? 
that each, the scarecrow, the tin man, and the lion already had what they needed inside them. He just needed to give them a little confidence. Chapter 16, how the balloon was launched. And here is the lion an angry face. For three days, Dorothy did not hear from Oz. This made her very sad and worried. The scarecrow was very happy with his new brains and told everyone about the wonderful thoughts he had. The tin man could feel his heart rattling around in his chest, in his chest when he walked, and he told Dorothy that in only a few days he had discovered how to be tender and kind. Really, he already knew that. The lion declared he wasn't afraid of anything on earth and that he would gladly face an army of men or a dozen fierce beasts. Each one had his wish granted, except for Dorothy, who wanted more than ever to return to Kansas. After four days, Oz sent to Dorothy. When she entered the thorn room, throne room, he said pleasantly, Sit down, my dear. I think I have found a way to get you out of this country. And back to Kansas, she asked. Well, I'm not sure about Kansas, since I'm not really sure where it is. But the first thing to do is to cross the desert, then it should be easy to find your way home. And there is only one way to cross the desert. I've been thinking the matter over, and I believe I can make a balloon which will carry you over the desert. How will you make a balloon? asked Dorothy. A balloon, said Oz, is made of silk, which is coated in glue to keep the gas in it. So here is... Oz. You can see he's kind of a small man talking to Dorothy. Let's see here. There is plenty of silk in the city, but there is no gas to fill the balloon so that it will float. If it won't float, said Dorothy, it can't help us cross the desert. True, answered Oz, but there is another way to make it float. We can fill it with hot air. Of course, hot air is not as good as gas. But if the air should get cold, the balloon will come down in the desert and will be lost. We, cried Dorothy, are you coming with me? Yes, of course, said Oz. I'm tired of being such a fake. I don't want my people to discover that I am not a wizard at all. I'd much rather go back to Kansas with you and be in the circus again. So Dorothy and Oz cut the strips of silk and sew sewed them together neat. When they finally finished this, <coughs> Oz sent one of his soldiers to search for a large clothes basket. He tied the basket to the bottom of the loon, balloon with many ropes. <coughs> All right. He explained to Dorothy that they would ride in the basket. When the balloon was finally finished, Oz sent word to his people that he was going to make a visit to a great brother wizard who had lived in the clouds. The news spread through the city, and everyone came to see the wonderful sight. Oz ordered the balloon carried out in front of the palace, and the people looked at it with curiosity. <coughs> I wish I had my glass of water here, but I don't. The tin man chopped a big pile of wood and then made a fire of it. Oz held the bottom of the balloon over the fire so that the hot air rising from it would be caught inside the balloon. Soon the balloon swelled out and rose into the air until finally the basket just touched the ground. Then Oz got into the basket and said to all the people, I'm going away for a while. During that time, when I am gone, the scarecrow will rule over you. I command you to obey him as you would obey me. By the time the balloon was tugging at the rope, that held it to the ground since the air inside was hot. It was much lighter in weight than the air outside the balloon. The balloon was beginning to rise. Hurry up, Dorothy, cried the, uh, Oz, the wizard, or the balloon will fly away. I can't find Toto anywhere, answered Dorothy. Toto had run into the crowd to bark at a kitten. When Dorothy finally found him, she picked him up and ran toward the balloon. She was only a few steps away, and Oz was holding out his hand to help her into the basket. When the ropes went crack and the balloon rose into the air without her. No, come back, shouted Dorothy, but it was too late. 
Oz was already riding in the basket, rising farther and farther up into the sky. There is Oz getting into the basket. And that was the last any of them ever saw of Oz. No one ever knew if he reached Omaha safely, but everyone remembered him lovingly, and they were very sad to see him go. There's Dorothy and the Tin Man watching Oz float away in the balloon. Okay, that's all for today. Next time we'll read, let's see here, chapters 17 and 18. Love you. Bye-bye.